most of the most of the tool works with your hands. You use use your, your hands and fingers as much as you can. Then switch to um, to smaller tools. It'll give you finer detail. And uh, yeah, and then finally finishing off with um, with brushes and, and sponges sometimes to get a really nice smooth finish. So I went to Laura's house and um, we measured her anatomy. So I measured certain bone points, um, distances, and lengths of uh, of her of her skeleton. Then I um, then back at the factory, I've welded up a steel armature, and so that steel armature basically represents her skeleton. Um, then after that's completed, I'll start applying the clay. I was absolutely just blown away initially by the fact that, you know, um, they were even considering doing something. And as I said, I, I genuinely thought that someone was, was having me on. I, I didn't believe them. I suppose for me, it means um, I want to help girls to be inspired to realise that I was just a young girl with a dream um, that relied very heavily on her family's support to um, you know, be able to achieve my dreams and I think that's a fundamental part for so many young athletes out there is you know you can't do it by yourself it's it, it re that statue represents my family and, and the blood sweat and tears that they put into um, you know allowing me to, to do what I wanted to do. Every sculpture is a new discovery of, of um, the, the way you look at things. I, I never stop learning new new things that can um, that can help me with my sculpting process sometimes I feel like a perfectionist but more it's, it's more impatience really there's no with sculpture there's there's no other way to get the job done rather than just just being impatient and and doing the putting the hours in and getting the work done um, yeah and then then the, the uh, when, when you think that it's it's ready you know that's um, it's, it's kind of hard to, to let go of them sometimes Laura came in the other day and uh, saw the statue for the first time and, and fortunately for me she was quite thrilled so that was um, a big uh, weight off my chest so yeah she, she really liked it and it's good to see her again because there was a few minor things that I noticed on her on seeing her for the second time that I'd missed in the sculpture so it was a great opportunity for me to fine tune some, some stuff. Looking at her after so much time had passed it was like she was a statue come to life. It was, um, it was quite, quite funny actually. Seeing the statue for the, for the first time was, was amazing. It really did sort of blow me away. I was most thrilled with the pose of the statue and that might sound a little bit silly, but you know, I'm obviously defending over the shot and trying to, to win the ball. And um, you know, I think it's a, a really strong pose that, um, you know, you've got full intentions when, you, when you're doing that during a game to win the ball. So I think for me there's a lot of strength surrounding that particular statue and that's probably what really hit me when I saw it for the first time. When the, the clay is finally complete and I'm happy with um, all the details and how exactly how it'll look in the bronze, um, then we start the moulding process. Uh, it's a silicon and fibreglass mould, so that, that takes quite a few days um, to complete properly. Uh, and that'll completely mould the clay, and so it's ready to the mold that it's ready to take to the foundry. Um, then the clay's thrown away, which is sometimes a bit disappointing. But uh, yeah, once once we've got the mould, we'll go to the foundry and cast out a wax, and that wax ultimately becomes the bronze casting. This bronze statue of Laura Geitz is, is significant for women's sport. It's, it's recognition for all the hard work that Laura has done on and off the court. And I feel really privileged to have been a part of that journey uh, and part of seeing her grow as a, as a, a young woman. Now that we're at the foundry, uh, we've cast out a wax copy of the sculpture. 
Um, the wax copy is then divided into body parts and then we, um, we fix up all of the, any imperfections that we find. So we use a variety of um, techniques to repair the wax. We'll, um, anything that we find, we'll uh, heat up some wax, uh, smooth it on, use, some, uh, use hot tools to, to re-melt the wax into shape, repair any um, imperfections or dings in the surface. Uh, it's really our last opportunity to, to fix, the, fix the shape of the sculpture before it goes into the shelling process, which then becomes the, the bronze. The shelling process is when uh, the wax body parts are covered in a ceramic liquid and ceramic chip to, to make a thick shell that ultimately becomes like bone china when it's fired. The, uh, the, the, the process is repeated, um, thickened up until um, it's ready for the kiln and then those parts, those body parts are thrown into the kiln and the wax on the inside is then melted out, that's why it's called the, the lost wax method. Once the, once the ceramic shells are at the right temperature, we're sure all the wax is gone, we take it out of the kiln, we place them in the sand pit. Now that the bronze has heated up in the crucible to about 1300 degrees, Dean and Dan grab it out of the furnace and they head over to the, to the ceramic moulds in the sand pit and start the pour. They'll pour in each section of bronze, uh, making sure it's all, it, they know that it's all carefully made its way throughout the whole ceramic shell, not missing any, any areas. And um, yeah, once, once they're all full, we leave it to cool for a short period. Now that the ceramic shell's cooled down a little bit and the bronze has cooled down, we can have a look. So uh, we carefully can tap away with a hammer and, and bust off some of the ceramic shell, being careful not to ding any of the, the bronze inside. Once we've revealed sections of the bronze, we can check to make sure all the work's okay. Fortunately, the pour's gone really well. Dean's done a great job and uh, she's all there. Now that all the bronze parts are out and um, they're all looking great, we can start the assembly. They're welded together. Um, starts mostly with MIG, bronze MIG welding uh, and Dean will make sure that they're all aligned and assembled perfectly. Now that we've got a, got a body all in one piece, we can start the chasing and finishing process. Chasing and finishing is uh, grinding, making sure all of the, the seams disappear um, and everything's lining up well, repairing any, any defects that we might find. Uh, and uh, of course the polishing. There's a lot of polishing work involved in this, in this process. Uh, we start with um, heavier, heavier grinders down to the sanders and polishers, making sure every bit of the surface is perfect. On the final day, it's uh, time for the patina. Uh, when she comes back from the sandblasters, she's checked over for any further defect work and uh, it's looking pretty good then we use a chemical solution to, to colour the bronze. We're going for a slightly different colour this time round, which I think will be really exciting. It's more of a, a smoky, lighter colour bronze. Uh, she's, uh, so she, once she's treated with the chemicals, it's time for, for rubbing back, and we'll expose all of the, the highlights and the parts that we want to, to pop a little bit more. Then once that's all done, it's time for the waxing. There's a wax solution that's put over it, it's, um, it's heated up and, um, and put on hot and then the excess is burnt off. Once the excess is burnt off it's left with a, a hard layer of wax that um, gives a really great shine and, and luster to the bronze. This is the final part of the whole process. Uh, seeing the finished product exceeded all expectations. I saw the statue midway through and obviously was pretty impressed with it there but the work that Liam's done in you know the detail of the bib and my name on the back of the dress and just um, you know the muscle definition and um, yeah just all those little details you know when he said to me oh, I was observing the photos on Google and your ponytail always swings to the right um, which is just obviously that eye of of such a creative um, individual he's just done an amazing job and I um, feel very lucky that I was in his very capable hands and seeing the end product today, as I said, just exceeded all expectations.